We're back from a little bit of a road trip yesterday. We picked up some old farm equipment and we're planning on using this for the upcoming build. If you followed along on the garage build, you know I spent a lot of time and energy moving my scaffolding around to work on the roof and the overhangs. And these two old running gear are meant to ease that process a little bit. They're gonna take a little bit of work to get ready, but I think we're gonna give it a shot here, mount the scaffolding on these running gear, and kind of, I guess you could say, make a poor man's scissor lift. Okay, I know one of the tires, the front left on this trailer is no good. Let's see if these other ones are gonna hold air. Yeah, that one took air, so that's a good sign. We'll come back and check it here in a little bit and see if it's still holding. I don't hear any leaks. I think we may be in good shape on this trailer. As far as the tires go, I don't hear any major leaks and they all took air. Everything appears to be in pretty good shape. The frame is a little rough, but for what we need to use it for, for scaffolding, I think we're in good shape. I don't think we need to make any modifications. The reach looks straight, so that's good. The steering works, I checked that. I think we're in good shape there. So I think this trailer is ready to go to put the timbers on and start building the frame for the scaffolding. So what I'm gonna try to do is to take this bolt out of the reach and slide this rear axle forward to the next hole. That'll get me 10 feet, just a little under 10 feet axle to axle, and my six by six post is 20 feet long. This post came from the temporary power pole that we had up earlier for the garage build, so I'm gonna dual purpose that, maybe cut it in half, and then I can put that as the framework between the two axles and then build the scaffolding on top of that. But we need to get this bolt out first, so we're just gonna keep soaking it here with some WD-40 and see if we can't get it loosened up and slide it up to the next hole. All right, let's see if we can't get this thing broke loose. Oh, man. is moving so that's a good sign all right that's a good feeling it 
Oh yeah. Perfecto. Well, two days later, and all these tires are holding air. So I think we're in pretty good shape there. Now we're down to tying the rest of this frame together. We have some four by six pieces, some six foot wide pieces that we're gonna tack on top of these six by six beams. And this will actually hold the scaffolding. So the scaffolding will be anchored, the feet will be anchored to these two beams. And what I've done is I've squared it up to the frame and my scaffolding is five foot wide by seven foot long. And these should be in the perfect spot to put those feet on. So we're gonna go ahead and anchor these down and then we can bring the scaffolding over, set a buck on top here and see where we're at and get that anchored to these beams. These beams have a little bit of a twist in them, as you can see here, but I don't think it's a big deal. What we'll do is we'll put these uh, angle brackets, once we get the scaffolding over here and we know that these beams are in the spot that we want them in, we'll put these angle brackets in just to kind of reinforce things so they don't move around. And I think we'll be in pretty good shape with the base, be nice and solid. Now comes the hard part. We're gonna take the scaffolding down and bring it over. So this will give you a little idea of what it's gonna look like. I think it'll work out pretty good. We're not on a completely level surface here, but I'm gonna try to get, uh, we'll get some C-clamps on that front side 
and actually get the scaffolding set up there and held. And I think that'll eliminate us uh, trying to move things around and get it to fit good. That kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for here. Now, we'll just try to find a way to get the bottom fastened so it's nice and sturdy. Well, now we're gonna have to drill through these plates and get this thing fastened. But I think this is gonna work out great. This is gonna be a huge time saver and energy saver. Cannot wait. We are finally done with the scaffolding wagon and I think this is really going to be handy for us. The I just kind of pulled it back and forth on the front here just to kind of see what it would look like on rough terrain. And you can still adjust the feet on all four of the legs, the jack screws, to get the scaffolding level. The wagon pivots on the front axle, it, it allows it to kind of twist with the terrain, but you can still adjust your scaffolding to get things level up top and the best part is this thing is super easy to push it's a light running gear i think this is a two ton or three ton running gear so it's light enough i can push it around by hand check this out let's say i just want to go down and work on the next seven feet we'll just push it down get it to where we want it if we need to we can block the tires I think maybe later on I may do a platform on this thing if I have some extra wood, I think would be kind of cool. Uh, but it looks pretty good the way it is. And the jack screws, it's already, I can see, twisted a little bit. But the jack screws all work. And we can adjust this thing to get it level. This trailer just goes to show you, you don't have to have expensive, fancy equipment to do a home build. All you need is just a little imagination. The running gear works great. The front axle with it pivoting uh, allows me to still adjust the jack screws on the legs. So, I mean, even the ground, it's not perfectly level. I think we can still make this work. Maybe not in extreme situations, but uh, it's really gonna be a time saver and I'm so excited to use this. We're gonna make a platform for the top so we can walk around and I think maybe even put a platform on the bottom or maybe even a toolbox or something would be kind of cool. But man, you could just make this whatever you wanted. And the best part is it is relatively inexpensive. I built this for less than what you could probably rent a rough terrain scissor lift at your local rental store. And I have this until the end of the build. I can use it for months, years if it took me to do the build. So. Think about, uh, if you're gonna do your own build, think about doing something like this. I, I think this is gonna work perfect. This is 1.0, we'll call it scaffolding wagon 1.0. I think there's some other modifications that we can do when we build our second one to make it a little better, 
depending on how fancy you want to go. Uh, but this is a great start. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.